Okay, so let's get started. Let's make this to full screen. So today we're gonna talk about another holy grail of the CMB. How much I, I hope I can surprise you how much we can learn from CMB. This is you know why CMB is central to cosmology. Acoustic peaks of the cosmic microwave background. This is you know why we know so precisely about cosmological parameter, the, about um, the, the amount of dark energy, dark matter, etc. Et now, you know, our time is going into precision cosmology because of this. Okay, let's get started. At the time of the Big Bang, we talked about that uh, the universe was a hot fireball, you know. There's a plasma, hot plasma gas, right? So there, there are a lot of ionized you know, electrons and protons and then photons of high temperature are scattered by this Thomson and the Coulomb scattering. You know, the photon and electron, they interact each other, right? And then they were scattered. This, this was happening. This was hot plasma gas. Um, at least, you know, several thousand degrees that someone calculated, right? when we go back to Richard thousand and more. And so, then at that time, the universe was a hot fireball of photon baryon fluid, because there's an interaction, right? So photons and then, you know, electrons that are mixed. It was a fluid. And then there was a sound wave. In a fluid, there can be a sound wave, right? How? Um, so, this kind of oscillation can happen. So, we have uh, this density, this hot fire fireball, we have this density fluctuation from, you know, inflation, right? And then, you know, some dense places have a gravitational potential, gravitational pull. So, everything is going to be pulled into this potential. But then when it is pulled, the density and then is high, so photon have a pressure, radiation pressure. And then it has a pressure, it's gonna go opposite way of the gravity, right? Then there could be oscillation, right? Gravity, radiation pressure, gravity, pressure, gravity. So this kind of oscillation can happen. And then, uh, well, oscillation frequency can be, you know, uh, something like, you can describe something like this. Oscillation frequency is sound speed divided by the sound waves uh, wavelengths. It depends on the wavelengths. Which, the sound, and then sound speed, you can write down roughly something like this. You know, C divided by this omega baryon, omega radiation, because sound speed is just decided by the baryon density to radio the radiation density ratio. Okay, so there will be this kind of oscillation in this hot fireball. <coughs> um, okay, and then density perturbation is, as we learned, uh, roughly scale invariant, but the sound still uh, preferred over others. Then, at this in this fireball, entire universe was acting as a resonance cavity with the sides of sound horizon. Okay. Um, what I mean by resonance cavity is something like this. Um, so this, this you can see, right? Say it's it's a whistle, and then there's sound wave, right? Air vibrates and then there's a sound wave inside, and then there's a frequency, resonance frequency, right? Uh, then like a single single wave, something like this, uh, or, or double, triple, and then in certain wavelengths, this whistle is gonna, you know, in a resonance, and then it make a sound, right? That's, you know, um, like this kind of thing, you know, this, you know, if you, put vibration here, and then in certain frequency, it, it has a resonance and it makes sound, right? Let's see if I can do it. 
I cannot do it, but in some frequency it does, right? Uh, so it's the same thing. And then the same thing happened in the early, early universe, in the fireball. In some frequency, um, with the size of the sound horizon, it red, has a resonance. Okay? And then that's what we're going to see in this um, CMB power spectrum. Say, um, say, okay, let's, let's see, see, this is the uh, sound horizon, you know. Sound horizon is the size, the maximum size where sound can travel within the edge of the universe. It's like a particle horizon, but this is for sound. Say, edge of the universe is, I don't know, 10 seconds, say the maximum distance that the sound can travel, that's sound horizon, right? And then that's going to be this size. So this is the, sound, the size of the sound horizon. And then if certain frequency is like this, the wavelength is the size of the sound horizon, it's going to be resonant. Resonant, right? So that's what happened in the early universe. So for, for example, this, this size of the whistle was the sound of the universe for a certain frequency. That's why the resonance happens. And then, what we're going to see this. So, we have seen this many times. Uh, okay, this CMB power spectrum. We, we did this um, last week or, or two weeks ago. So, this is a Fourier transformation of the CMB fluctuation, right? And then, this is a scale, right? Uh, multiple moment L and then it corresponds to the angle. So L is in Fourier space, so this smaller number means large scale, and the large number means small scale, and then at certain frequency, there's a more fluctuation than other frequency, right? other, other scale. So you see this is about one degree, there's a lot of you know, uh, fluctuations, and there's more fluctuation, more fluctuation, this is power spectrum. And then those peaks, you, you see peaks, right? CMB power spectrum has peaks. Dawn scale corresponds to that resonance scale of the, the whistle or the sound horizon of the universe. Okay? So this scale, about one degree, was the size of that whistle of the universe. That's why it, it's resonance, so you have a lot of power. Okay, and then you, you see, you know, double, double, triple, quadruple, etc., et smaller scale also. Okay, so that's why we have this fluctuation at certain scale because there's a, a, there's a resonance. And then today we're going to learn that what we can, how there's so much information here in this CMB power spectra about cosmology. And then we're gonna learn what we can learn from this CMB fluctuation. So this is this is you know central to the cosmology. This is one of the most important uh, part of this class. You know, so you should love this figure, okay? So if you if you see this figure, you should like oh I love cosmology. That's such that's such an importance in this figure. I think why you I think you understand uh, why I say this because we can learn a lot. Okay, then let's um, and then we, because of this we can start you know precision cosmology. We know precise number of cosmological. Problems. Okay, let's get started. Um, where should okay? So the first acoustic peak. peak. So here is the first peak, right? About one degree. This, this will tell us the geometry of the universe. This is why we, this is how we know the universe is flat. Okay, let me explain. So, the, um, the first acoustic peak, right, um, is, um, um, we can measure the size of the first peak, the, the position of the first peak is, 
about one degree, right? So it's like one degree. You can you can see this is the size. We can measure the apparent angular size from the measurement from the observation. Okay, and then we can also calculate physical size at the time of the fireball CMB fireball because we know the um, this graph we know the oscillation uh, frequency right because of the sound speed we can calculate the sound speed because we know the density and how much variance are there so we can calculate the, this physical size and then by comparing the physical size and then angular size we know the geometry of the universe what I mean is here, what I wrote in a, in a uh, green. So in a flat universe, so we know this size, we can calculate because we know the density of the fireball. So I don't know how many megaparsec we can calculate this. Okay. Then we have we can measure this one degree, right? And then geometry, geometry test is these yeah, typical three patterns in a flat universe. It's like this, right? And then closed universe, the parallel like is gonna go go like this, right? And the open universe, the parallel light is gonna go separated, right? And then it, this size is it decided, you know, physical size we know, and then by measuring this angular size, we know which type of the universe we live. If we live in an open universe, this angle we measure is large, right? If we in a closed universe, this angle we measure is small. If we live in a flat universe, somewhere between. Right? And then we measure one, one degree, right? Well, actually, you can measure the precise value and then test the, measure the precise curvature of the universe. And then it turned out to be this was the case. So the flat universe. So the angle is matches with the sound horizon signs. So that's how we know the geometry of the universe is flat. Meaning the straight line is gonna go straight. Three angles, addition, sum of the three angles of a triangle is gonna be 180 degrees. You know, if it's an open universe, if the triangle is on the surface of a sphere, the sum of the three angles are not 180 degrees, right? So that's how, you know, we know that uh, we live in an open, uh, flat, flat universe. Okay, so that's one information uh, that we were going to we, we learn. And then, okay, at the end of the class, I'm going to give you a test, right? You like test, right? Exams, right? So I'm going to ask you, how do you learn the, the <laughs> geometry from the first peak? So, anyone has a question? Did you understand? You ready for our exam? Okay, let's go. But then there are more, more places. Okay, now the second um, point is this normalization. So, the height of, of our CMB power spectrum, you have some number in power, right? This will tell you omega lambda. That's that's easy to explain because you know, e, well that's that's e, too easy to tell. If there's more radiation, well this is radiation, right? If there's more radiation, the CMB intensity will be stronger. If there's less radi radiation, this intensity will be smaller. So by measuring the height of the CMB, we know how much radiation are there in the early universe, which is omega radiation. Okay. Omega radiation in nowadays is very small number because the universe has expanded so much bigger and then as we learned, this density of radiation gets smaller and smaller to the power of one plus Z what? Not not three, right? Not three, so what? It's X, Y, Z, yes, X, Y, Z, and the wavelength gets larger, so the light loses energy into the wavelength, so uh, it's to the power of minus four. 
So that's why it quickly gets this gets quickly smaller. But it was big number in the early universe. Okay, so that's the second thing we can learn. And then now uh, the third, third thing we can learn is uh, this omega variant. Okay. The odd number odd number to even number ratio. For example, first to second or second to third, uh, second to third, this ratio of the peaks. From these, we can run amount of omega varying how much ordinary matters are in the universe. Ordinary matter means us and then Earth and then hydrogen gas, not including dark matter. Ha! Um, because of the phenomena called the baryon drag. So what's the L? I'm sorry? What's the L? L. 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 I told you last week, right? This is the Fourier space. So multiple moment, L is in a Fourier space at the moment. Okay. So do you remember, anyone remember how to get the angle theta from L? You know, 180, right? 180 divided L gives you the, the roughly the angle. Okay, then um, okay, we are talking about omega berry, odd to even number of peaks. They are called uh, something called baryon drag. Okay, so uh, even, you know, uh, so that they are, you know, in the early universe, the, at this time of cosmic CMB is radiated, the universe was in a fireball, so it was dominated by radiation, you know, radiation, the light. But there are still some buried, some matters on there. And then, um, when, and also barium also have a little bit of over density, right? And, and density fluctuation, right? Some places get a little bit more barium than other places. And then this, you know, uh, the barium's gonna have a uh, uh, drug. It drags photon, okay? Because of the photon baryon interaction, okay? Then this, this is called baryon drug, okay? And then this baryon drug it's stronger on odd numbered peaks because these odd numbered peaks like first peak, third peak, fourth peak, fifth peak these are compression peaks so uh, the density of baryon is larger there so that's why this baryon drug is stronger on odd numbered peaks you know this sound wave is a density wave, right? So it has dense sparse, dense sparse, right? This vibration is sound wave, right? And then so in these peaks, there are some peaks are dense peaks, you know, contraction peaks. And the other peaks are rarefied peaks, low density peaks. And then these dense peaks, there's a little bit more interaction from barium. And this is called barium drum. And then by taking the um then um then by taking a ratio of odd peaks to uh, even number peaks, the, the this difference is decided by how much baryons are in the universe, right? So by, we can, by taking the ratio, we can measure the omega baryon, how much baryons are there. Um, omega baryons are larger, uh, then odd peaks are the stronger. So by taking a ratio, okay, here, uh, here in a CMB, uh, so that by taking a ratio, first to second or second to third, if this ratio is larger, omega baryon, there are more baryon drug, so there should be omega baryon is larger. So by taking the ratio here, you can measure the omega baryon. Cool, right? Okay, then that's the uh, that's the third point, and then let's go to the next one. 
Um, okay, so, and then peak at smaller scales. So there are some, well actually there's only two peaks are shown here, but this continue, right? Continue to smaller, smaller uh, scales. And then nowadays the ground, te ground based uh, CMB telescopes are measured, you know, this continuously measured much smaller and smaller scales. Okay? Then uh, this, with this, you can measure the omega matter. How much dark matter in the universe? The here's how it works. So peaks at smaller scales are actually earlier oscillation when the sound horizon was smaller. So okay, uh, for simplicity, we we we're, we're considering you know, CMB come all the, at the same time, but this. Oscillation, of course, tra transition was happened with a certain amount of time, right? It doesn't happen in one second, right? It took some time to, for this to happen. Um, then, uh, this earlier oscillation was, uh, this smaller scale was when the sound horizon of the universe was smaller, that means universe was smaller at earlier time. And then that's, for example, before omega matter equals omega radiation. And then this smaller scale oscillation, it depends on the amount of omega matter. So by measuring the smaller PHCMB smaller scale peak, then you can measure the dark matter density. Okay. So by measuring um, measuring here, this smaller scales, you can measure the amount of the um, omega matter. How much that? Okay, that's the fourth point, right? Okay, and then fifth point is silk dumping. This here, silk dumping. This. Smaller scales are actually peaks are getting smaller and, and smaller and smaller, right? This is called silk dumping, you know, taken after the name of the famous professor at Oxford, Joseph Silk. Um, this is happens because of this reason. Uh, so the higher order peaks are suppressing, it goes down. Why? Because transition was not instantaneous. So when CMB clears up, uh, this, there was a random walk of photon. And then this random walk, you, you know, um, okay, let me explain. The, so universes, CMB, this is a little bit review, but CMB was a fireball, right? And then at that time, photon cannot travel straight because photons are gonna hit electrons and then it's scattered around. Photon cannot travel straight in the universe. So that's why it was a plasma soup. But then when the universe expands and expands and expands and temperature goes down, and then these electrons are gonna combine with proton and then becomes hydrogen atom. And then universe becomes neutral. Then if there's no more electrons, the light can travel straight, right? There's no more Thomson scattering. Okay, light can travel. So this is where CMB was emitted to us. You know, this is called recombination because it becomes neutral. So, so the light that we see, we see CMB is the light from this recombination. When the universe becomes neutral, we can see the light coming through. Before, the universe was just scattering the light in any direction. So that's what, that's the cosmic microwave background we see. But this process of becoming recombination, it's, uh, it, it didn't happen instantaneously. Because in our simple, you know, in our class or simple model, um, we assume it happened instantaneously. Oh, ionized plasma, hot gas to 
neutral universe is instant. No, 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 right? It has some time, right? And then, Joe Sill starts saying, okay, when the universe was in transition, there was a little bit of electron remaining here and there. And then sometimes, photon hits this electron and then scatter around a little bit. And this process is random walk, you know, photons are going to hit here, hit here, it's random walk, right? And if it's random, it's going to suppress the peak because it doesn't happen at a specific scale. It's not like a resonance scattering. It doesn't happen in a specific scale. So if it's random, then this peak's going to go, go down. You know, sometimes it happens this scale, sometimes this scale, right? So, um, that's why this, uh, the higher uh, transition was suppressed, and that's called silk damping. And then this depends how much this higher peak is suppressed. This depends on how long was the transition. You know, if the transition was long, the long, you know, it's the random walk is larger, it's random walk is doing a lot of, many times, then peaks are more suppressed, right? If random walk is, you know, short, then peak are not so suppressed, right? So, how long was the transition? And then also, depends on omega barium, okay? If there's a more barium, more electrons, then, you know, the random walk will be happen more, right? Okay, so, uh, that means by measuring the suppression, how much this peak is suppressed, we can measure the omega barium, and then also how long it took for the uh, recombination. So, by measuring how much this whole higher, old, higher older peaks are suppressed, we can also measure omega barrier. And this is important consistency check, because omega barrier, we can also measure the barium from the barium drug, right? The, the ratio of all to even number peaks. So we can, measure, we can measure it in two methods, and then we can compare for consistency check. Okay, so this is another way. Um, there's a little bit sad story that the, we call that the surface of the CMP is recombination, right? Because electron and the proton is going to get together, make it hydrogen, and it's, it's combination, right? But it, when you say recombination, it's re, right? Re means sounds such as like second time, right? But it never had, never combined before. So it should be first time, uh, uh, combined, but somehow we call it uh, recombination. It's weird. Um, another one is, and then later universe of reionize, which uh, we are going to talk maybe next week by first black holes and the first star stars, the universe ions. You know that the universe nowadays is ionized, right? Okay. And then we call it Reionization and hybrid, but this is also re mean re such as second time, but it's actually first time universe is ionized. But we still use it to reionization and recombination. So from recombination, CMB is coming from recombination. Okay, then what else? Um, when so, Joe Silk is a famous professor at Oxford. But um, uh, when, you know, uh, he proposed this idea of silk damping when he was a graduate student. So when he was a graduate student, he one day, he was, you know, studying cosmology, and then he one day went to a summer school of fluid dynamics, and then he went to the fluid dynamics uh, summer school, and then he thought, oh, I can apply this to cosmology, and then he applied this fluid dynamics to cosmic chemical background, and then that's how he found this silk dumping, and then he wrote a paper about it, so that's how, and then how he, that's how he became famous. Okay, then, okay. 
Uh, okay, the third way. So another important thing that uh, we are going to talk about um, maybe second or third week later this month is these peaks. So this was acoustic peak, peak of the you know sound in the early universe, right? This is a, this is a peak of the C and B cosmic molecular background. However, we can still see the same peaks in galaxy distribution right now, nowadays. Because in these peaks, the density of baryons are a little bit higher, right? These so in deep scale, there are a little bit more galaxies than other scales. So in a similar way, these peaks, you can see it in galaxy distribution nowadays with the, you know, now the large surveys such as STSS or BOSS or DAISY, you can see these uh, acoustic peaks in their galaxy distribution. And then that's called Baryon Acoustic Oscillation or BAO and then again this is this can also this is this can be used to measure the distances of the universe because um, again we know the physical size of these peaks right so by measuring peaks using galaxies and different redshift it, it works as a standard rule because something we know the signs, we can calculate the physical signs and then you put it at different distances by measuring the angle of this peak we can measure the distance to that redshift, right? and then this is very simple geometric method to measure distances so nowadays, you know, people are you know, paying a lot of money to galaxy survey and then try to measure this and then you can measure holograms and expansion of the universe, those kind of things that we're gonna do it uh, in two weeks probably. All right, then uh, let's show you what I explained it. Okay. Um. So here, let's see. So now let's look at this panel, first panel, and then here the parameters that changing is omega curvature. So by the geometry of the universe, right? So here, uh, open universe, closed universe, if you change the geometry of the universe, the position of the peak is moving, right? So you can tell by measuring the exact position of the peak, you can measure the omega k, which is the geometry of the universe. Okay, and then let's look at the next panel down here. Let's look at the, so this is simulation, right? By changing parameters and then how the, the, the CME power spectrum is going to change. This panel, let's change omega baryon. And then as you change omega baryon, what happens? Baryon drag is going to happen, right? So the ratio of odd number peak and the even number peak is going to change. Well, as you can see, um, maybe okay let's compare second and third peak so the third peak is not changing much right but the second peak is changing dramatically right third peak is only changing like this but the second peak is changing a lot right so by taking the ratio of these two you can measure the amount of omega value Uh, then, uh, last one, uh, last time, this is dark matter, so I said uh, these smaller peaks, higher number peaks, are from earlier universe where, you know, radiation and you know, dark omega matter are more comparable. So, uh, these, by measuring these peaks, you can measure the omega matter amount of dark matter, and then as you can see, if you change the omega matter, these peaks changes a lot, right? So you can measure it, um, measure omega matter. Okay. Now, unfortunately, C and B cannot measure the dark energy. So um, here, dark energy, um, how expansion speed of the universe, you cannot measure it uh, because you can see 
by changing the omega lambda, the CME power should be not changing too much, right? So you cannot measure the omega lambda. Because CME B is not the distance measure, because dark matter, uh, sorry, dark energy, omega lambda, dark energy is going to expand the universe, right? So, you know, expansion speed, right? So you need to measure the distance, the expansion speed to measure omega lambda. But C and B, is, we cannot measure the distance. It's a, it's a geometry, you know, it's a science, so geometry. So we can measure the curvature, but not very sensitive to, to omega lambda. So that's why, you know, to measure dark energy, we need a supernova survey or baryon acoustic constellation. Different kind of surveys are needed to, to measure omega lambda. Okay. 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 So that's the basic part of the the okay. So that's the basic part of the explanation. And this is animation, it's similar thing, but then say this is omega baryon. So you by changing omega baryon, you can see the uh, ratio of the peaks are uh, changing. Is the silk damping changing? It should be changing. And then uh, curvature. Let's see curvature. So you change the curvature of the universe, then you see, you know, the peaks are moving, right? It's this way, right? Not this way, this way, right? Okay, then, uh, maybe dark matter? Do you, see, do you see dark matter? Let's see dark matter. So by changing the dark matter, you can change C and B. It's, it's going to change, so you can measure the C and B. Dark energy, he, ah. ah, okay, I should have said, you know, by changing dark energy, the green, uh, let's forget about the curvature, the other one, but the blue one is not moving, right? So even if you change dark energy, it's blue one is not moving, so CM, that's the weakness of the CMP. Uh, dumping tail, can we do? Is it changing? This is silk dumping. So, how much dumping is here? You know, depends on omega baryon as well. So you can measure how much dumping. Okay. Then, baryon fraction. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. This, these we are going to do next week. Okay, good. And then now, I think this one. Okay, so. Okay. Um, before starting this game, maybe we can do a test. No? Okay. Let's. See, let's see if my explanation was good or not. Okay, shall we start from Ashwin? Um, so, uh, how we measure the omega curvature, omega k from CMB power spectrum? When we change the k, the multiple moment for sure. Yes, 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 yes. So, L is by angular size by angular diameter distance. If L, L is 200, it's a flat, sub, flat surface. If it increases, it corresponds to open or other surface. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. At least someone was listening to my lecture. <laughs> That's not. Okay. How about uh, Lucy? Uh, how do we measure omega varying from this? Uh, we take the ratio of the peaks yes. higher and low. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So far. Uh, perfect. Okay. Then. Okay. Then. Shall we go to 
omega radiation. How do we measure omega radiation? Me pull up. Yes, yes. Okay, good. So this depends on the amount of radiation, right? Um, then, uh, okay, it's getting more difficult. How about um, from silk dumping, uh, what can we measure? Cosas? Uh, omega barrier. Yes, yes. Okay. So you are not sleeping? Excellent. Okay. Or oh, if there's more omega barium, there's more silk dumping. Okay. Uh, it's getting difficult. Uh, how do we make a measure omega matter from CME power spectrum? Do you remember this one? Except, yes, smaller scales uh, from area universe, so we can measure omega barium from here. Uh, is that all? Is that all? Oh, maybe you guys are perfect. Excellent. Very nice. Very nice. So, you can tell there's a rich information here. Okay, what the minute? Okay. Rich information here, right? And then this. Um, at the time of the Planck and uh, no, no, Kobe satellite, there are still some errors you know, on the size, the position of the peaks. But the WMAP satellite and also later Planck satellite measure the CMB, um, CMB power spectrum very, very precisely. That's why we know these parameters very, very precisely nowadays. And then now we went into the Precision cosmology, where we have you know few percent level, or few the all these parameters are decided at few percent level, so that's becoming very very precise. Okay, good. Then 